Good morning class and welcome to Ballistics University. It has been brought to my attention by my colleagues that we haven't had a quiz or an exam recently. So to make the Dean happy, we're going to start off today with a pop quiz. Now don't get too excited. There's only one question and it's not very difficult. All right, everyone ready? Okay, here's your question. Without defining the term energy, which one of these two cartridges do you think has the most energy? The 22 rim fire or the 44 magnum? All right, everybody got their answer? Okay, well we're gonna find out by doing a little experiment. We're gonna shoot both of these cartridges at a steel plate that will swing when hit. The one that swings the most is the cartridge that probably has the most energy. So let's find out. First, we'll start off with the 22 rim fire fired from this Kimber in 22. And now we'll fire the 44 Magnum through this Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum. Now, what you have just witnessed is kinetic energy. And I think we pretty much agree that the 44 Magnum had more kinetic energy than the 22. Sir Isaac Newton pretty much defined the term kinetic energy in, in a lot of the papers that he wrote. Uh, he described kinetic energy as the energy possessed by an object in motion. Now, for motion, you have to have velocity and you have to have the mass of the object in motion. So he came up with this formula that basically says kinetic energy equals one half times the mass of the object moving times the velocity squared. Now if you look at this formula, you can see that if you double the mass of the object, you'll have double the kinetic energy. But if you double the velocity, you'll have four times the amount of kinetic energy because the velocity is squared. And an example of this is if you drive your car at 30 miles an hour and slam on the brakes and then you drive your car at 60 miles an hour and slam on the brakes. Well, it's gonna take you four times as long to stop at 60 miles an hour because you have four times the amount of kinetic energy. Now, we can do the same thing with bullets. Let's take a bullet that weighs the same, just like your car weighs the same, and make it go faster and see what it does to the kinetic energy. So we'll start off with a 38 and a 357 Magnum, which both share the same bullet diameter and they're both going to weigh the same, 158 grains, and the 38 Special will go at 755 feet per second, the Magnum will go at 1235 feet per second, and you can see the kinetic energy is just about doubled, it's 1.6 times. Then we're going to take pretty much that same bullet and put it in a rifle cartridge, a 30 out 6 rifle cartridge, and make it go at 28, 2900 feet per second, and you can see the kinetic energy is 2800, which is five and a half times more than the kinetic energy with the 357 Magnum, and you're just about maybe a little bit more than double the velocity. So this gives you a good example of the amount of kinetic energy available. So let's see how these bullets impact the target. Let's start off with the 38 Special, 158 grains, 200 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. Let's see how it hits the target. And now the 357 Magnum, same grain weight bullet, only it's going a little bit faster. It's going to have 1.6 times the amount of kinetic energy. Let's see how it affects the target. And now for the 30 out 6 rifle cartridge. Same bullet grain weight, more or less, 150 grains, but it's going to have five times the amount of kinetic energy as a 357 Magnum. Let's see what this does to the steel plate. Now 
Now these two bullet holes here are the ones from the 30-06 with all that kinetic energy. Actually fired at the plate twice and you can see the cratering that it did here. That's a whole bunch of kinetic energy. That's why rifles are significantly more powerful than handguns. You've got more powder you can burn and you get a whole lot more velocity. More velocity equals more kinetic energy. Now we saw that the 30-06 rifle round that produces 2,820 foot-pounds of energy is pretty impressive. It moved that plate quite a bit and darn near made a hole in that steel. That's a lot of kinetic energy. But people don't normally get shot with rifle rounds. They normally get shot with pistol rounds. The 9mm is one of the most popular rounds in the world and is approved by all the NATO forces. 9mm with a 115 grain bullet produces about 350 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. Now is that a lot or is that a little bit? Well if you notice, if you remember from the other table, it's right between the 38 and the 357 Magnum. But let's compare it to other things that have 350 foot-pounds of energy and see how that compares. Well you can take a one pound weight and drop it from a height of almost six feet and when it hits the ground it will have 350 foot-pounds. Or you could take a 10 pound weight and drop it from a little bit less than an inch and it will also have 350 foot-pounds. So let's take these weights, drop them from that height onto a soda can, and then we'll shoot the soda can with the 9 millimeter and see what the kinetic energy looks like. This is a one pound weight. It's a little bit less than six feet off the ground. And there's an empty Diet Coke can down underneath it. We're going to drop it and see what it does to the can. Three hundred fifty foot-pounds of kinetic energy landing on top of that Diet Coke can. Now we have a ten-pound weight going to be dropped from a little less than an inch onto a new Diet Coke can. Still going to be three hundred fifty foot-pounds of kinetic energy. Let's see what happens. Three hundred fifty foot-pounds of kinetic energy. And now the nine millimeter, one hundred fifteen grains. 1100 feet per second, still 350 foot pounds of energy. Let's see what it does to the Diet Coke can. <laughs> 350 foot pounds of kinetic energy. Now all three of these cans were hit with 350 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. These two, as you can see, were more of a blunt, blunt force because you had a big wide surface area transferring that kinetic energy to a big wide surface. Here with the 9 millimeter, you can see there's clearly an entrance wound and an exit wound. Bullets don't have a tremendous amount of kinetic energy, but what they do have is the ability to penetrate. They cause an injury to deep tissues within the, underneath the skin, to bones and livers and hearts and things like that. Whereas this is more of a crushing injury. FBI statistics show that most people that have been shot with a handgun, unless they've been shot in the skull or in the spinal cord or in a long bone that causes immediate incapacitation, they describe the sensation as being hit with a thrown baseball. Now a thrown baseball has somewhere around 350 foot-pounds of kinetic energy depending on how fast it's thrown. So the next thing we're going to do is shoot that steel plate we shot before with the 9 millimeter, and then throw a baseball at it and it should be about the same, 350 foot-pounds kinetic energy. One of our star students here at Ballistics University has volunteered to throw this baseball and produce about 350 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. And let's see how it moves that target. Have at it. And now the 9mm. Let's see what it does to the steel plate. So what have we learned today at Ballistics University? Well, we learned that Sir Isaac Newton invented the formula for kinetic energy. One half times mass times velocity squared. And if you want to have a whole bunch more kinetic energy, you make the bullet go a lot faster. That's why rifle rounds have much more kinetic energy than pistol rounds. 
Pistol rounds don't have a lot. 350 foot-pounds is not a lot. But the big advantage of a pistol is it penetrates the skin and does the damage inside the body. So, to quote a line from a popular TV series, math, science, history, unraveling the mystery that all started with the Big Bang. Well, math, science, and history, I think we covered all three of those today, and hopefully we have unraveled some of the mystery. And those of you that failed the pop quiz earlier in this segment, I need to see you in my office before the end of the week. Shoot safely and shoot often.